I want to tell you now how to build a puppet stage a slash backdrop for your children's church. Uh, these are very, very important because not only do they provide, a, of course, a place to conceal your puppeteers and a, a nice uh, place to do puppets, but also a backdrop is important because it provides a theme. It provides a, an atmosphere to children's church. It provides something for the kids to rally around. Um, it's so important because the children, the place, the kids' church, as much as possible, should become theirs, uh, with as many props and decorations, and all centered around a given theme. Uh, hopefully something related to the history of the church, or the name of the church, or of the area that the church is in. So when I started a children's ministry um, in Reading, Pennsylvania, well, of course, I picked Caboose, because the train theme, Reading Railroad and whatnot. Uh, another church that I was at, uh, they had a woman who uh, had a vision uh, of the church being a lighthouse in the community, so I made it an ocean theme, and we call the children's ministries the lighthouse. Another church that I worked at in Reading was uh, St. James Church, and it had an old cathedral-type building that looked like a castle or a fort, so we called children's ministries Fort St. James, or Fort for short, uh, no pun intended. Whereas this one uh, that we're, we're in the process of building now uh, is based in Delaware. So uh, I started looking up some history on Delaware in the encyclopedia and looked at its various nicknames. And one of them is called the Diamond State. I don't even know why yet. I'm assuming because it's a small and valuable state. Uh, so I started thinking Diamond State, Diamond State, Diamond Mine. Let's call it the Diamond Mine. So that's what our theme is going to be. So we're going to be taking you through the stages of the construction of the Diamond Mine uh, puppet stage backdrop. Um, and then it's awesome if you have a room that you can, you can call your own for kids' church that you don't have to tear down and set up and it has to be used for other functions if that's possible. So if not, well, you have to work with what you have. And uh, so I've already done the preliminary stages of the uh, puppet stage construction, but basically what you need for this particular type, you may have a, a zillion other types, which are probably better. This is the one that I've been doing for a number of years. Um, you need four pieces of four by eight paneling, uh, preferably uh, not scratch and dent per se, because you really want it to be uh, in pretty good shape. So uh, maybe some old Luan or paneling, but something very light. Um, sometimes the puppet, uh, the lumber yard may donate it because of what it's used for. They'll give you a real good deal on it, or they might have some damaged uh, uh, paneling or luon that only one side of it's damaged, which is fine because, of course, you just need the other sides. After you get the four pieces of the, uh, the paneling or the luon, then you need some real light framework, uh, one by twos. Um, I used some ripped off door jams that uh, they called tomato steaks. I would call them glorified tomato steaks, and that's what I use. But you don't want anything too heavy in case you need to collapse it, which you'll be able to do, as you see. Uh, or if you want to move it, or like me, I do a lot of traveling at times, uh, doing ministry in other places, churches, schools, camp meetings, whatever. Uh, we need to fold up ours and make it as compact as possible. Like, for instance, our Caboose Puppet Stage, we, we've taken that so many places, and I'm so thankful I didn't make it out of heavy materials, because we've had to carry it many, many places. This, of course, is a, just a piece of paneling uh, that I got from the lumberyard. Let me turn it around for you. You see the other side, what it was, was the decorative stuff that you usually see in a bathroom. Uh, so, of course, you don't want to use that, and that's a nice backing to have, you know, if you have the option to get that, because uh, it's sealed, you know, in case, you know, you were ever storing it in a damp basement where it was uh, 
you know, outside for some reason. Uh, it's really neat to have this, and it's, you know, it's nicer looking too. So if you'll notice, you see the framework that we have here. And you can see this framework. It looks like about, it looks like about a, mm, almost like three quarters by one and a half or three quarters by two. So you cut, you know, you take two uh, strips of eight feet by this and just lay them down. And then you subtract the width of it here times two, of course, for the other side, and then you cut your other length, which is down in here, which goes across the, the section of uh, plywood or whatever, not plywood paneling, that's the four foot length or the width, all right? And uh, so you, uh, you know, tack those together, and uh, it's very, very important to use glue, or better yet, like liquid nails or some kind of adhesive caulking, uh, with all your joints if you can, and preferably use drywall screws uh, to put the frame together, and I've done it two different ways. I built the frame and then, uh, you know, ran a bead of caulking and then laid the uh, paneling on top of it. Or the other way I tried it this time was um, I cut a strip at a time as far as the framework and laid the uh, Luan on top and then, you know, after it was all finished, then I tacked the framework together. That was kind of backwards. So anyway, when it's finished, you see you lay the paneling down and then you just use the drywall screws you know putting them pretty close together if you can like you see here because they um, they tend to with a lot of motion and a lot of movement and use uh, if the glue and the caulking is not real strong uh, you tend to find that uh, the uh, paneling can actually separate a little bit from uh, the frame so it's nice to have a lot of drywall screws if you can I'm losing focus here so that's basically what you have it's basically just a four by eight piece of paneling uh, with a one by two frame or some reasonable facsimile thereof. Now if you'll notice over here, there are three other ones just like it. So what I'm doing now uh, is getting the four panels and I'm laying them on the floor so that we can hinge them together. So your puppet stage basically is going to be six, well not basically, exactly 16 feet wide by 8 feet tall. Now you can customize it to your room however you want it, however, whatever is best for your room. Some of your ceilings may not be that tall if you're in a church basement, which many times children's ministries is. So um, but what you do now is you just lay them all next to each other. After you have your four panels laid out, as I showed you, then you want to get some strap hinges, something like these from Stanley. Any hardware store will have them. Um, what that is is just like a, I think this one is a two inch utility hinge strap, or a, or a two, let's see, the light duty two inch strap hinges from Stanley, or whoever makes them, doesn't matter. Uh, the real issue is that however wide your framework is, you don't want to get the strap hinge wider than the framework because uh, otherwise your screws will go out over it. You won't get a real good bind, bind whatever, uh, with the uh, this wood screws going into the, the strap into the framework. So make sure you get the appropriate ones, okay? So two strap hinges. I'm looking to my left, your right, not because somebody's over there, but because that's where my monitor is and I want to make sure I'm centered on the screen here. So then what you're going to do is get some utility hinges, uh, some narrow ones, and you want them preferably, uh, if for any reason you were gonna move the puppet stage, it's best to get them to where the pin, the kind where the pin doesn't come out, all right? Some of them have removable pins. Uh, I would recommend getting the hinges that the pin won't come out, all right? Now, there's a very important way that you hinge these panels together because they're all going to, be, going to become one unit. But there's a certain way that you have to do it, or I highly recommend you do it, because of protecting uh, the surface once you paint it. So what we do, come down here, and you put your strap hinge there, okay? And you fasten it well with some drywall screws. I use the drywall screws, although they give you uh, screws with the strap hinge in the packet. I like the drywall screws. They're thicker and a little bit bigger. So then what you do is go up about, oh, you know, a third of the way, whatever, and you put your other type of hinge on. 
then what we're going to do, come around. Hope you're not getting seasick like me. Come down the other end. Now you'll notice that because of uh, oh just minor flaws in the uh, workmanship, not not uncommon with me or with the materials, you need to make sure that either your one side of your puppet stage backdrop is flush. Okay. That one side, and it'll make sure you get a straight edge and you run it along here and keep one end uh, at least flush as much as possible because that will affect it when we put casters on later, okay? And you want to keep one end flush and then the top is the, is the end that's not perfectly flush, relatively speaking. So there, that's how you do one side, is you hinge, all right, the far left panels together on the front of it. Now, then what you do is you come over to this scene here between the far right panels and you put do the same exact hinges, okay? And once, once you have them attached, the hinges on the far right and the far left seam, you have to do something different with the middle seam, which I'll show you in a second. What I decided to do instead to make it a little easier is this is the same set of uh, another set of exact panels like I had on the floor there but this is another puppet stage I'm building that's further ahead in its completion okay so there's the, there are the same four panels that you see and what I just talked to you about remember I said that far left seam and the far right seam alright you see there's the strap hinge up there come down a little ways and there's the regular style hinge another regular style hinge and then at the bottom another strap hinge alright that's how you do the far left seam now we come over here here's the far right seam connecting connecting the uh, other outside panel so there again you see the the, the uh, strap hinge a little bit ways up you do the regular kind of hinge a little bit further another kind the regular the regular kind of hinge and then at the very top we have another strap hinge, okay? And let me move back here. So you see, that's the one panel on the right, the other panel on the left, just like we showed. Now, you'll notice, let's look at the middle seam. You see how that's different. If you'll notice, on the middle seam, there's no hinge all the way down. There is no hinge at all. That's because the hinges are on the back side. And there's a very important reason for that. When we want to close the platform, you see, those hinges, those two flaps, the outside flaps close in because they protect the artwork that you're going to have on there. Then over on this side, this is for transporting it or closing it up. This would close, this would close in and fold up against the two middle panels. So all the artwork and the design that you will have is protected. Then what you do, after the two outside panels are folded in then what you do is of course I can't do it here I can't reach it but you'd pull the you have the strap hinge on the middle seam on the other side and you have the other two hinges in the middle on the other side and then of course a strap hinge at the bottom that way the middle seam pulls in like an almost like an accordion and the two others the, the two other panels as, as I showed you earlier they close towards itself so it all folds up into one neat four by eight uh, accordion if you will puppet stage for storage or for transport what you have let me back up here is a nice four by eight I'm sorry 16 by eight uh, puppet stage backdrop Then what I've done in the past is that I had an idea, like I told you, I had a, a theme or a, uh, you know, an idea that I wanted to have the backdrop be, whether it's a caboose or it's a lighthouse or an ocean scene or a fort, um, whatever. And then what you do, if it's in your mind and you're the artist and you just take your, preferably a nice carpenter's pencil, a thick one, and you start to come and just sketch out your entire scene of what you want on this big flat white canvas, so to speak, or all white. What I didn't tell you is that after you have the four panels bolted, 
then, and laying on the floor, and then you want to put the uh, casters on too. I usually put two under each panel, but you wouldn't think it's not necessary. But you'd be surprised the weight on the small casters that they, the bearings can go and it's hard to roll. So I put eight. And then what you do is, after you have the casters on, then you get some old latex paint, off white, white, whatever you can, and you put a couple good coats on the whole thing to seal it. Then it's a lot easier for the artist to come and do the artwork if it's not you. So what I used to do in the past is I would take a you know a pencil and sketch my theme what I wanted. I draw the whole thing out on pencil and sometimes modifying it, draw my whole thing. Then you, of course you get your multicolored bright latex paints uh, and paint the thing. You know, just paint your your artwork that you sketch and uh, get it all done. And then basically your artwork will be finished. Very brightly colored. Kids like things that are big and bright. So use this. The primary colors especially make it as bright as you can. Then, after that is all finished, of course you'd have to have in your scene, you'd have to of course have windows for the puppets, so you'd incorporate them in. With my caboose puppet stage, we had a big caboose, and of course there are windows in a caboose which made it easy. In the lighthouse, I had a lighthouse on the left hand side and there was a big porthole in the lighthouse for a puppet. Then we had a tree house over here on this side with holes here for the puppets. And then I had a tugboat on the horizon with a window there for the puppets. You have to remember that when you do your artwork and you develop your scene, you've got to remember that you leave the scene in such a way that you're going to have holes or windows for your puppets. Now, after that was done, then what you do is take your, you know, a drill, drill to do a starter hole, then your jigsaw, and you cut out your puppet windows with your jigsaw. And you'd stand the edges, and, uh, you know, then I'd put another piece of framework, just like the one by twos or the reasonable facsimile, underneath the puppet window, right? Let's say the hole was right here above my hand. I would take a piece of framework and put it right to the edge flush. So that would give support to the window, so it wouldn't be wobbly, and it would also give more support to the whole panel. You have another, each, each one of these pieces, somewhere in it, should have a cross piece for stability. So I would always wait to do the puppet holes wherever they were going to be, and then put it underneath. And sometimes, not uncommonly, I put another brazier on the top of the puppet window, because then, when I hang up my black curtains, I would staple them and pleat them and staple it to the top brace of the window. Now what I have set up here behind me is uh, what I'm going to, uh, one way to transfer your idea uh, from your head to an artist friend, to a computer, to an overhead transparency. So um, this is where you project the artwork onto the puppet stage that's now completed, assembled and painted, ready to go. So this is something what it looks like. Now, because my stage, the platform where I have the overhead projector sitting on is, you know, not, doesn't come out far enough, this, of course, is not going to be scale for uh, what we would do, all right? But I just wanted to give you the idea of, of how to, one way to do it. If you don't do the method that I did for years where you sketch your own sketch on it and then paint it yourself and cut it out, because of time, now, I can have volunteer people come in from the church and they come in and project this on the overhead transparency, and then they trace it, and then other artists come in, or the same person, and they come in and paint it. So of course, what we do is bring this back, as far back as we want it, okay, until it's the right size for the puppet stage. So you can see from here, I'm gonna have to go back pretty far to get it to the size I want it, something right around like that, maybe even bigger, and of course, then we have issues of Then you just merely focus it in. It's a little bit awkward, but not, not being on the table. So you see, then you have a full size to boost to fill up the, you know, just about most of the puppet stage. And then you just go ahead and trace it and paint it accordingly. Now, if I wanted to have a caboose name, I'd have to do a little bit of alteration here. This actually, what you're seeing, is the print from my stationery for caboose, not for the actual puppet stage. So I would only be using this top part. So that's how you do it.
Okay, and now here is in our current children's chapel. This is the finished product of a puppet stage done in that way that we did it. This is called Nugget Town, a western town. Each one of these panels on this particular puppet stage were done, each one was a separate transparency. It wasn't one giant one all connected. So we had the artist do one at a time, put it on the overhead transparency and shine it out a panel at a time and come in and trace it and then they come in and paint it. So we had this panel, this was a western town like I said, so this is the mine supply. Then this is Kid Thedral. The 1K stands for first graders and kindergartens, kindergartners. And then this panel was the Golden Nugget General Store. Of course, we didn't want to do anything like a saloon. <laughs> then the Nugget Town Telegraph Company. You'll notice now, these are, this is basically the finished product, and then what we did, we did is I had to, the windows on, of scale in this building that the artist uh, had were too small for puppets, so I just made them large. Okay. And then here, instead of a window that would be scale, like these down here, of course, be too small for a puppet, I made my own big one, kind of improvised. And if you see, look real closely, you see... I used a magic marker and did fake nail holes, and then you see those screws right there, the drywall screws? They are holding that back framework that I told you about earlier in the video. Both a piece of framework on top of the puppet window, and then there's another one on the bottom, all right, for strength. And that also gives the puppeteer uh, something to lean his elbow on. And then you see that all that is is thick black fabric, and it's stapled to the to the brace above the puppet stage of course and I just started using a staple gun and stapling into that cross piece there and started pleating it so that's the basic scenario the basic product of how to do a puppet stage backdrop see it helps so much to have something like this in your kids church so God bless you as you do it so I pray that God guides and leads you and anoints you to do a real effective ministry to your children in your church. I hope this and the time machine will be some of some tools that'll help you enhance your program. God bless.